Hello and welcome to Ninkeso Live, episode 18. 90, 90, 18 was last week. We have not gone back in time. We're a day later than normal, but it is episode 19. And I am El Gran Queso, and I am joined this week by a pre-recorded video of my cat, Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Yes, unfortunately, Miss Bree isn't feeling too well, so she's not here. So, you've just got me. I mean, let's face it, I am the better half of the team, so it, sh it should be alright. <laughs> but yeah, I'm probably going to waffle quite a bit, and it might not be as long an episode, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best with the cards that I have been dealt, just like Yu-Gi-Oh. I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh. So how is everyone today? Good evening, Barlet, in the chat there. I will give you a meow back. Meow. So yes, so this week, obviously we normally would have a little chat, but there's no one here to chat to. So if you've got anything in the comp, like, I'll, I'll be a bit more interactive with the chat this week. If you've got anything you want to say, it will help me out tremendously. So yeah, so this week, it's been a pretty normal week for me. We're coming up to the end of Fall Guys Season 2. So I have been putting a little bit extra time into Fall Guys. Just so I could get to myself to level 40. Which I have now done. So in this season, I have got to level 40 twice. Once on the PlayStation and once on the PC. At least with Season 3, I won't have to do that. It'll just be PC only from here on in. PC only. And that's like one of the other dilemmas I've had this week. Um, obviously we all know like the new consoles, the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X have come out and it, I've not made it a secret. I would quite like a Series X just because of Game Pass and all that thing. But my PC has been surprising me about how well it's been doing and <laughs> I'm kind of like tempted to upgrade the graphics card. I mean, it's nothing mental because I don't have like a massively amazing processor like CPU in my um, PC, but I was thinking oh, I could get a RTX 3060 Ti and that'll probably run my games that I want to play just as well. So now I'm in this dilemma. I mean, the problem is Xbox Series X out of stock, RTX 3060 Ti out of stock. Surprisingly, as anything in this new day and age, when things are released, they get brought up and sold at inflated prices online. Um, there's more to that. There's more to that coming to come on. Right. What is Barlet saying? Make sure Kelly has a chance to talk. It's a pre-recorded footage of her. She's not really live. She's asleep somewhere. <laughs> it's just so you don't have to look at a blank space. But not that that matters for people listening on the podcast. OK, should we get on with some quick news? The kind of news that we don't really want to talk about, but we feel we should mention anyway. Okay, first up, a re-release of the N64 Classic, I think that's stretching it a little bit, Glover appears to be taking shape after a Kickstarter is teased. So, if, if you enjoyed Glover, it might be coming back. Um, Google Stadia extends to eight more European countries. But will they care? That is the question we need to answer ourselves. Stadia is here, but do we care? Fortnite Season 5 arrives with Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian as skins. I mean, that's pretty cool. I don't really play Fortnite myself, but that's still pretty cool. <laughs> um, former Nintendo of America president Reggie Fitame returns to the Game Awards as a presenter. The Game Awards are actually tomorrow. I'm umming and ahhing whether I want to stream that or not. Um... Because I'm not that interested. I think I'd rather just play games. And a Merry Hyrule Christmas album blends Zelda classics with beloved festive carols. That just sounds too good to be true. A Christmas Zelda album. That's called a Merry Hyrule Christmas, if you want to look it up. <laughs> okay, so that's the quick news out of the way. Uh, main news. Okay, first up. Now, if you remember last week if you watched or listened, where we spoke about how Nintendo decided to cancel the Smash Brothers tournament 
because they were using emulators for Smash Brothers Melee. So they sent a cease and desist to them. Um, well, it's kind of spilled over into other Nintendo games. So this weekend, Nintendo held its Splatoon 2 North American Open. Um, we're on Nintendo Life at the moment. I'm just reading this article here. Because obviously Sam's normally much more prepared than me. <laughs> Although a live stream was planned for the finals, it ended up being cancelled due to unexpected ex extent... Ex Ex I can't even read that word. Existential challenges. Now, they didn't really go into any detail about why they they suspend, they cancelled live streaming the final. But people are kind of like thinking it's probably because a lot of the teams in there had hashtags, free melee hashtags in their names. So I don't know if you know what Splatoon is. It's a team shooty up game. I'm sorry your connection keeps buffering. <laughs> I'm sure it's okay at my end. Anyway, so it's a, it's a team shoot 'em up game. And obviously the teams give themselves names. And as a show of support for the, for the Melee community, they're using like hashtag free Melee. And rather than Nintendo advertising this in a live stream, they're just kind of like, oh, okay, we just won't show it then. I mean, the tournament still went ahead. And whoever won, won. I don't really know because I don't really follow Smash um, Splatoon. But yes, so they actually just cancelled the um, live stream rather than showing like the um, names supporting Melee, which <sighs> I mean, I'm not saying this is right. I'm not saying this is wrong, but it's kind of to be expected. I think what people kind of forget is Nintendo the same as Microsoft, the same as Sony, the same as Sega, the same as any multi-million pound corporation? They're not your friend. They're not here to be buddies. They're here to make money. And if you're doing something that they find goes against their ethics of their company... Whether that's correct, whether it's right, whether it's wrong. We do have more of this coming up in the, in the next story too. Their main focus is to make money. So advertising a way that you can play some of their games, um, let's just say not 100% legitimately, isn't something they're going to do. So I don't know why people are surprised. And obviously keep going, oh, free melee. I mean, it's a game that came out on the gamecube smash brothers melee back i mean it, it's coming up for like 20 years old yes there's still a hardcore audience that want to play it yes you can't actually um buy it anywhere else other than the gamecube but it's still their property and they're not here to be your friend they're here to make money so it's kind of to be expected i think Anyway, moving on. Now, we're going to keep to this theme of Nintendo's intellectual property. And, oh, hello. Thank you for joining my Twitch. I noticed that you had. I'm very much appreciated, shit rank. Welcome along. Normally, there's two of us doing this podcast. But my, my the other host, Sam, she's not feeling very well. So I've been left in the deep end to do it myself. So it's kind of me just babbling for the next half an hour. <laughs> okay so again we're on nintendo life because i like nintendo life it has a good source of um news stories so custom made um etika um etika was a streamer who took his own life i believe was it last year so other people um let me just come down to the story yeah last year popular youtuber desmond etika amofa tragically took his own life so artist and content creator captain alex who produces a wide range of custom shells and other items related to nintendo decided to produce an an eticon to raise money for jed found for jed fun fun foundation a mental health and suicide prevention charity so while an initial crowdfunding campaign to create the controllers was unsuccessful 
Captain Alex ran a second similar campaign, which was the cap- which was the campaign that raised ten thousand dollars for the charity. Um, now, the issue wasn't that Alex was selling modified controllers; it was related to the fact that the devices used the Joy-Con name. Obviously, he had called them the Eticon. So Nintendo brought in a cease and desist. Now, obviously, this is again, this is like it's Nintendo. They're gonna do protect their intellectual property. And I know they're getting a lot of flack, which, let, let's be fair, you can see why they're getting the flack. And I don't disagree with the fact that they're getting attacked for this. The fact that they've stopped someone selling a product that was making money for charity. It is a little bit why, but it's a Japanese company and it's an American charity. It's not like affecting nintendo in any way other than them seeing it as you're kind of selling stuff off the back of our creation so again i don't know why people are surprised by this i'm not saying it's right that they stop this but i'm not sure why people are surprised that these things happen um and i don't understand why they didn't just change the name rather if that was the only issue um Apparently, Nintendo didn't shut down the business completely, Captain Alex said. They just, in a tweet, they just had to remove some designs and modify most of them. So, controller modification isn't the issue. Use of copyright is, which is true, you know. And, again, people are upset with Nintendo. It's for charity still, shouldn't stop them. This is true, but like I've said before, Nintendo isn't here to be people's friends. They're here to make money. Um, And it's a Japanese company that isn't any way connected to this Jed Foundation. So I kind of understand where they're coming from. I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's what they've done. Um... But that is kind of like, trying to think of a, it's not something that's close to them. I mean, maybe if this guy had approached them first, that's fine. But the fact that he's, the designs, let me just bring up, there's a picture here, the designs. Okay, it actually kind of says Joy-Con on it, which is kind of what they're going against. They've got nothing against him making these products, um, like redesigning Joy-Con shells and things, but he just can't use the copyrighted material on them. Um, you know, like I say, it's. I'm not saying they're right. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying people shouldn't be surprised if they use a Nintendo copyrighted material. Nintendo's going to come down on you because that's what companies do. You know, companies aren't here to be buddies they're here to make money and that's the world we live in unfortunately but yeah i agree it's like i'm sure they could have come to some arrangement so that maybe worked with the company or something but obviously if the guy has just gone ahead and done it without running anything by them meh okay (laughs) moving on see that's the problem when it's just me Obviously, you only get my opinion. (laughs) I don't have Sam here being the voice of reason. (laughs) Okay, so going back to kind of what I said earlier in the introduction with the Xbox and the RTX 3060 Ti, how, and the PlayStation 5, how as new technology is being released, it's getting brought brought up by scalpers who are selling it at inflated prices. This next story kind of goes on from there um this is from Eurogamer and basically the headline is gangs are breaking into fast moving lorries to steal PlayStation 5s so gangs are hitting lorries on the run to steal PlayStation 5s a new report has revealed over the weekend um the times report 
The Times reported that deliveries of PlayStations, TVs, cosmetics, mobile phones and cigarettes have all been raided in recent months using a stunt known as the rollover. So the gangs involved use multiple cars to box a lorry at speeds of up to 50 miles an hour. Um, one gang member climbs out, secured by ropes through the sunroof, and then uses cutting tools and a crowbar to break into the lorry, climb aboard, and steal the PlayStations. So, my take on that, I mean, obviously, that's bad. But the whole fact that people are still giving money to scalpers who are selling these products online, you're just... You could be funding this criminal activity, which is why don't pay over the odds for the hardware. Just be patient and it'll happen. You know, the more people will pay over the odds, the more this is going to keep happening, the more this is going to drive up demand of people going to these sort of lengths to get the stock to sell. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, going on from this as well, um, CEX actually came under fire as well because they've actually been selling um, second... Obviously, you, if you don't know what CEX is, if you're not from the UK, CEX is a, um, a kind of like a second-hand shop where you can sell your products to them and then they'll sell them on. Um, so CEX has actually come under fire from customers and staff for asking for £815 for a PlayStation 5. Registered retail price of the PlayStation 5 is 450 Um, And again, this is fueling the criminal activity of trying to make everything, you know, people see the amount of profit they can make. So it is such a draw. Apparently they're paying customers that bring in a playstation 5 650 650 pounds in cash so that's 200 pound more than if you bought one so you're already 200 pound profit there if you paid for one if you got one by some other means that's 650 pound profit if you've got a few of them you can see how this adds up and you can see how this is fueling the criminal activity um you know i've heard stories in america about how delivery trucks and things have been hijacked not hijacked but like goods taken from them and this is all tied into the fact that people are impatient and are going to pay more than what the what the registered retail price is just so they can get it early and just just don't <laughs> you know if no one paid more than the odds these people wouldn't be trying to buy them all up with moment stock comes on sales on on sale and everyone would be able to get them quicker that's just my opinion it's my opinion stop it stop giving money to scalpers that's all i have to say on the matter so we'll move on we'll move on okay so there was an interview not long ago with um sega's i can't pronounce these sort of names toshiro nagas nagosi um where he said nintendo consoles are aimed at kids and teens um although the there is some dis in there is some dispute whether that's actually what he said with the translation because obviously it's a japanese he's a japanese guy so it's all been translated so i'm just going to read this article from nintendo life as part of sega's 60th birthday celebrations the company's chief creative officer Toshiro Nagosa, Nagoshi has taken part in a video interview where he talks about his time with the firm. Nagoshi is perhaps most famous for his association with the Yakuza, Yakuza franchise, but his history with Sega games goes back quite some time. He worked on arcade driving titles Virtual Racer Daytona USA before moving to the Super Monkey Ball series. They used to be quite good, Super Monkey Ball. The series was significant significant because the original title was the first get game sega released on a nintendo console when the company abandoned hardware and switched to multi-format publishing when asked about super monkey ball um 
Nagashi explained that the reason GameCube was picked as the platform for the port is due to the age range Nintendo hardware is aimed at. However, he adds that he feels, even now, Nintendo systems are aimed at the same age range. Um, I can... Uh, this is like a quote. This is the quote. Obviously, it's been translated. I think even now, Nintendo platforms is still a games console that is played by a wide range of age groups. But basically, I think it's hardware for kids and teens. Aimed all, aimed all that at the time, Nintendo was putting a lot of effort into the kids market. And I thought it would suit. Um, I don't know if this... I mean, I don't really know kids and teens that much. But I'm pretty sure most kids and teens quite like playing violent blood bloody games as well i don't i think if you're looking at it on the surface level you yes i can see how games like animal crossing mario and things look like they're kids games but i think it's more than that i think it's they're played by a wide variety of people and i think it's just um like for me nintendo has always been my favorite um consoles and always my favorite games i just like that style of game and you know let's face it it's been a long time since i was a kid <laughs> you know we're talking nearly 40 years but yeah i still prefer to play that style of game um which is one of the reasons again why i don't really want the playstation 5 because i'm not interested in demon souls um i've played the original spider-man on the playstation 4 uh, again it's just like meh it's not really for me um i just prefer that style of game i don't think it's got anything to do with the fact that they're targeting children i mean the switch kind of proves that how successful it's doing uh, you know it's on its way to be nintendo's most successful console it's also on its way to potentially outsell the playstation 4 with how fast it's selling so even though I think on the surface it looks like Nintendo kind of are aiming for kids, I think the appeal of their games is much wider than that. I don't think it's naive to say, well, they're just kids' games because obviously they're not because they're enjoyed by adults as well. Um, I think it's kind of like like a Pixar movie or something where on the surface, yes, it's a kids' movie, but there's always more to it than that. There's always stuff in there that is that that adults get as a joke as well. And I think that's the same with Nintendo games. Like on the surface, yeah, they look pretty kiddified, but there's more depth to them and layers to them than just being a straight up it's a kid's game. What do you think, my pre recorded cat? I see. <laughs> anyway moving on this is so hard by myself i apologize this is probably going to be the worst viewed episode ever okay so as i mentioned in the quick news the new season of a fortnight is out and it has the mandalorian and yoda in it and one of the other new costumes in it is actually kratos from god of war who is a sony as a sony exclusive character so because of that um metroid samus started to trend on twitter as fans speculated over a potential fortnite crossover um i don't know if you know who samus aaron is she's the star of metroid and on the surface yes her, i think she would look good in fortnite do i think this would happen no not a chance none at all nada never nintendo are not going to put their property into fortnite um <laughs> they're not going to have their character appear on other consoles no matter how good a publicity this will be for a metroid franchise which has its core audience of fans but has never been particularly mainstream um sales have never been up there with like mario or zelda or anything like that yes i think she would be a good fit but personally i can't see that happening at all like the 
only way I could see this was happening, because obviously Fortnite is a cross-platform, cross-platform game. And yeah, it's not unheard of for Nintendo to put the odd thing out there, but it's not happening. It's rare. It is really rare. Excuse me for one moment. Um, Like, the only way I can think this could happen is if it was a Switch exclusive and they programmed it so that if you were playing against people on other systems, it just defaulted to, like, the standard un standard costume so no one could actually see it was Samus. But I can't see Nintendo. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I really can't see Nintendo putting Samus Aran on onto a game into a game that is available on a PlayStation, an Xbox, a PC, a phone. I mean, what do you think? <laughs> I just I just don't see it myself. I really do not see it. Okay. Moving on. We're running out of stories here. This is I said this would be a, I did say this would be a quicker episode. Okay, so Fall Guys. I like talking about Fall Guys. Fall Guys did a tweet the other day. Um, I think if you follow me on Facebook, you probably saw the picture. Where they put this post up just saying, time to suit up. Soon. And people started speculating, who is this? Um, now, one of the popular speculations was Doom Guy. And apparently that is his official name. And kind of backing that up a little bit is the official doom twitter account retweeted it saying might be time to suit up <laughs> so it you know people are kind of as suspecting now that this is actually doom guy um i did actually play doom eternal for the first time this week and yeah i could see how that could be doom guy I definitely could. Um, I'm not sure it'll, it'll take my place in my heart like the dragon does. But I think if I was going to like play an evil game where I'm being mean to people, then maybe I might want to dress up as Doom Guy. <laughs> but obviously, when it first comes out, if it is Doom Guy, everyone's going to have the costume. Absolutely everyone. So yeah, so that's like the strongest rumor. Um, they tweeted that on the second of December. And obviously there's been no news, official news yet, whether it is or isn't. But I think it could be a safe bet that Doom Guy is coming to Fall Guys. Now, I think that's a good thing because it kind of suggests that the game is getting traction and actually starting to get slightly bigger franchises interested in putting their stuff in there. So obviously the more that can happen then, the more it can grow. I mean, if you look at Fortnite now, They've just had a season where it was all like Marvel um, superheroes. And now that this current one, they've got people from all different franchises all over the place. So this can only be a good thing. If we can start getting things in from like outside the gaming world as well, you know, like Hollywood movies and stuff. Four guys could start looking, could start looking interesting. Dragon would still be the best though. Circling dragons, that's where it's at. Oh yeah, and... One other bit of news, if you ever play Fall Guys and there is a dragon at the end of the level and it's making little circles, it is unlucky to ignore it. You have to make a couple of circles with it as well. <laughs> okay, moving on, on to our final, that's it, our final story. Now... I've spoken on this podcast before about the um, ride on the ride along Pikachu right, where you could sit on, you could lounge on it and the Metapod all like the onesie that you just get inside like a little Metapod. Well, there is a new face on the town. There is a new one on in about that has just been revealed and it is Ditto. Ditto has transformed into a chair. <laughs> So the shape-shifting Pokemon is now a chair you can relax in. And it looks really cool. <laughs> it's also not ridiculously expensive, which is good. Look, you see, may I introduce... This is a tweet from Pokejungle. 
may I introduce you to the Ditto Chair. This amazing product is coming to Japan and costs roughly 250 US dollars. Not a want, a need. It's 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 a ditto shaped like a chair, with a with the di ditto face on, so it looks good. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's not. It's Barlett would probably want a Mareep chair or a Wooloo chair, but there's a lady sitting in it, and she looks fairly unimpressed. <laughs> it doesn't look like a big chair. That's the problem. She doesn't look like a particularly large lady. So it might be a bit small for me. I can't see myself doing streams in it anytime soon. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but let me know if you think that chair would suit you. I think it would be a good chair for Kelly. Kelly the cat just over there. I think she'd like it. I don't think she'd ever sit in it. But I think it's a good chair. Okay. That's the news of the week with only one person's opinion. So you're probably shouting, going, that's totally wrong. What are you on about, you foolish person? But I can't help it. It's just me. <laughs> I, think, I think I did well, considering it was just me. Short notice as well. So do we have any questions in the chat at all? If we do, this is the time to type them in. Um, you can also get me on Twitter at queso underscore cheeselets. Or you can just use the hashtag Ninkeso Live. Not that I have checked that hashtag for a few weeks. <laughs> you want one. Barlet does want one of those chairs. They are cool. I do like them. I'm going to bring the picture back up again. Look at it. Look at that chair. <laughs> I think it's too small for me, but you know. You know. Maybe if I win the lottery tonight, I'll, I'll buy everyone a chair. Everyone who's in chat who wants a chair, I'll get you one if I win the lottery tonight. There, live deals, live deals. <laughs> anyway, is there anything else from anybody? No? Obviously, there's a delay, so I have to just keep talking a little bit. Um, I'll do kind of my outros. So, yes, you can find me on Facebook as well as El Gran Queso 74 What, even £2? No. If I win, like, the big lottery win... Not if I win £2, because that won't even cover the cost of a chair for myself. <laughs> okay, hit, we'll, we'll, put it in, we'll put it down. If my six numbers exactly match the six numbers on the lottery, the seed in, which is the 9th of December 2020, and you are in the chat at this precise moment, who I can see is Eva Barlett... I think Debbie said something earlier, and I think Shitrank said something earlier as well. So if they want a chair, they can have one too. <laughs> but just those people, that's it. You see what you miss if you don't watch this live? Anyway, yes, I'm on Facebook where I stream six days a week, Sunday through to Friday. Um, we play a lot of full guys, and we're also currently playing through Paper Mario and the Origami King. I do stream here on Twitch. Uh, we have Mario Monday on a Monday, surprisingly, where we play Mario Maker 2 games. Um, we're also playing through Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age, Definitive Edition, S. Such a long name. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so follow this channel here if you want to keep up to date and get alerts when I go live. Okay, I think that's everything. Okay. You can also find uh, Miss Bree at GamerGirl underscore Miss Bree. That's G-M-R-G-L underscore Miss Bree. Hopefully she'll be back next week. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed looking at Kelly, looking all cute. <laughs> but, okay, so the outro. <clears throat> the Batman thing. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. <clears throat> Will Miss Bree make her triumphant return and save the day? Find out the question to this answer. Same cheesy time, same cheesy channel. Say good night, bestie. Good night, bestie. Thank you for putting up with me on that one. That was hard work. See you later. <laughs>